Imagine having an AI assistant that can query a million rows of data. What would that mean for your business? I have built an AI data analyst using NA10 to connect to any SQL database. And in this example, we're pulling insights from the Google Analytics sample dataset in BigQuery. And the best part is that you can plug this into your own database, whether it's for marketing, finance, or operations, and get an instant insights from your data using natural language. Let's jump in and see how it works. So first I needed some data. And after doing some digging around, I found the public dataset, Google's Analytics dataset sample in BigQuery. It has around a million rows of traffic data from Google merchandise store so it's a real e-com store and the data is typical of what you would see for an e-commerce website it includes information about traffic source data where the visitors originated from the content data and how the behavior of the users on the website this includes like the URLs of pages the visitors looked at how they interacted with the content etc and it also has transactional data so now that we have the data let's jump inside of NA10 and see what we did right so here we have the main BigQuery AI agent and you can see that it's connected to a webhook because I'm using a front end to chat and communicate with the agent. And we'll see that in just a second. So straight away, you might have noticed that we're not using the SQL built-in agent inside of NA10. We're actually using a tools agent here. And I'll explain why in just a second. Looking at the top level high overview of what's happening, we have a natural language query coming in from the front end that goes into this main agent. And this tools agent basically has an overview of the schema of the database. So it has all the different table columns and the kind of information that it holds. Because the data set has multiple different columns and a bunch of different tables, here we're basically splitting the responsibilities so that this main agent is basically tasked with only understanding the user's intent, analyzing the query and identifying find the different filters the tables that we should focus on when creating the sql query so basically enriches the user's query then it passes it to our database tool and generates the equivalent sql query and then the response comes back from the tool to our main agent here which converts into a more user-friendly format and then we do some more formatting of the response here before we respond to the webhook and it goes back to the front end and by using this structure and splitting the responsibilities between two different agents, we're basically able to conversate with the agent because sometimes we might not even need to pull in any database or call the database query. And another benefit is that we're able to use a very simple and fast LLM. And here I'm just using the GPT-40 mini model. So when it comes to the memory, I've just used the Postgres chat memory and we're keeping the context window to five. So this is how many pass interactions the models receives for context. And then if we look at our database query tool, this is very simple. Uh, we're just basically saying, call this tool to convert a natural language query into SQL and fetch a response from the database. So if we look inside of our database query tool, this is what it looks like. And we're basically simulating what was happening with the built-in SQL agent. So this first agent generates the SQL query. And I found out that Entropic model works really well for this. So this is what I'm using here. And after that, we're doing some query validation. So we're checking for things like deleting of tables or modifying of the data, making sure that the agent hasn't included any destructive commands in the SQL query. And then we're executing a query inside of BigQuery. So here we just have to connect with our BigQuery account using OAuth and just look at the documentation. It's very simple to set up. We set the operation to execute query and then we just pass it the SQL query from the previous node. I've included some more formatting of the response and I've also included a Google Sheets node here. And the purpose of this is to output the logs of what's happening and it makes it very easy to track what's going on. So here I've got the timestamp, the user query, and then the generated SQL query, just so that we can monitor the agent and make sure it's actually outputting the correct SQL queries. And that's pretty much it for the database query tool. So going back to the main agent, let's actually see an action and ask it a few questions. Right, so here we have the agent on our left-hand side inside of NA10. And on the right, I've got a very simple Streamlit application just as a front end to be able to communicate with the agent. So just to get started, I'm gonna ask it, hey, to make sure that it's all working and connect it up. This is in test mode. That's why I have to click test workflow before executing. Um, and as you can see, it comes back very quickly asking, how can I assist you today? If you have any questions regarding Google Analytics data or anything else, feel free to ask. So I'm going to start by doing some data exploration questions, very simple ones, just to understand the data set a little bit better. And the first one being, what are the earliest and latest data points in this data set? So I'm going to click test workflow, run that. And as you can see this time, it actually went and called the database query tool which will convert this into an SQL query and then execute that against BigQuery and it will come back with a response and respond to us. These types of agents do take a little bit longer to respond because they have to do a lot of reasoning and actual execution of the query itself takes a bit of time. So this is why 
you would see that they take a little bit longer to respond. But here we have the earliest and latest data points of the data set, which are correct. So this sample goes from August 2016 to August 1st, 2017. So I'm going to ask you one more question just to get the number of rows and make sure that's around a million. Um, I think it's just under. So it's around like 900,000. So I'm just going to let that one run here. And we can see the Google sheet here with the logs. Um, we can see the enhanced queries. These were very simple questions. So we can see the SQL query generated and the enhanced queries. So we have the total number of rows in the data set to be 900,600. We round up to a million, right? Um, so next step, I'm going to do some real questions. So I'm going to start very simple and then work my way up and do some more complex questions. So first we have this one here, count the total number of sessions per month. And to be honest, this is not even like a simple one. So it has to aggregate by month and count the total number of sessions for each month. So let's see what that one does. Right. So we came back with the data here. So it's nicely laid out in table format. Um, we can see that it went from 2016 to 2017. And for each month is given the total sessions for that month. Awesome. So next I'm going to ask it something to do about the traffic. So here we have find the top five operating systems that had the most traffic. And I'm just going to do test and let that go. Right. So let's see what it does. Awesome. So the top five operating systems that had the most traffic were Windows with 350,000 visits, Macintosh, Android, iOS, and then Linux. That sounds about right. Let's check the logs and see what it did. So what I asked was find the top five operating systems that had the most traffic and then it enhanced it by saying retrieve the top five operating systems by visit count using the device dot operating system and count the visits ordering by highest traffic. Right. So this is awesome. It created the SQL query for that. So we can see here is looking at the table suffix because the data set is split into multiple tables where each table is a specific day. And we have to basically look at the entire data set here. So it's looking from the first table to the last table. And then it's grouping by the operating system and then ordering by the visit count and limiting to only five to get the top five operating systems. So yeah, awesome. It's doing what it's supposed to do. So let's do something a bit more complex. I'm going to ask it about the bounce rate per traffic source. So test workflow. Awesome. So here we have the bounce rate per traffic source summarized as follows. So we have a table of the traffic source, direct YouTube, Google partners, and then Google analytics. And then for each one, it's got the total visitors, the total bounce rate, and then the bounce rate percentages. This is awesome. And you can start to see the power of this. So this is a very complex query and the data set we're using is huge with multiple tables, different columns. So we pretty much have 365 tables because each day is a separate table and we aggregate in all of that information and be able to get insights from it from simple one sentences in natural language. And we get something like this. And if you want to get your hands on the system, including the database query tool, I'll leave a link down below to my school community and I'm dropping all the resources in inside of there. So we managed to build a system that is powerful without writing a single line of code. Everything is in no code except for the front end, but you don't actually need that. Um, you're able to just connect this to a chat interface inside of NA10 to communicate and chat with the agent. And you can take this further so we can automate charts from these tables. We don't have to look at it in tabular format. We can input it into charts like I shown in a previous video where I had the voice AI SQL agent. So not only that, we're able to communicate with it and ask it insights about our data. We're able to visualize that data in an automated way. So the possibilities are truly endless. I'd like to see what you guys think about this. What should I add to this setup to make it more robust and test it out even more? definitely let me know in the comments down below. And with that being said, that'll be the end of this video. I hope you guys found some value in this. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.